Hello, hello. Good evening. Hopefully, um, you guys will be able to see the live for whatever reason. StreamYard has something going on where now you can no longer stream to Facebook groups. So I have to stream to my Facebook business page. So I don't know how that's going to work, but I can download the live afterwards, I think, and put it in my group and save it. But nevertheless, good evening. My name is Kayla Joshua. I'm a financial services strategist, and I am here today to talk about our relationship with money, to simply have a conversation. And I remember at some point, I didn't even realize that we had relationships with money as people. I thought money was a physical, a tangible object. I did not know that money was basically like, it's an energy. It's an energy. Um, if you, well, should I say, we all have complex relationships with money. From my research, what I found is it really is based off your culture, your history, your background. It's so many different things and reasons and ways that we have the relationship we do with money. And if you can hear me, like I said, once again, I have to stream to my business page instead of the group. If you can drop a one in the chat, that would be greatly appreciated to let me know that I do have some audio tonight. So I know me personally and probably other people have a real real different relationship with money. You know, I thought, like I said, money was a tangible object, but as time progressed, I learned that money is really just, it's like an energy. Money is energy, and you have to be open and receptive to receiving money. If you feel like you're in a position where you have to work you know, barely making it and money shouldn't come to you as a person, that's exactly what you're going to receive in life, if that's how you feel about money. So you get out of the atmosphere in exactly what you put in. Um, it's a lot of different factors that impact your relationship with money. It could be based off your culture, your religion, um, your so many, so many, so many different things. I know as for me personally, I have numerous stories coming up and why I feel the way I do about money and finances. I always felt that, you know, we only had enough money to get by. We never had enough money to like, we were never meant to be rich. We were never meant to have this and any other, and which is the farthest from the case. And I think that's really a mentality and I hate to say it, but for African-American people, because, you know, we think that we're supposed to just have enough to get by. But if you, you know, I know everybody isn't, um, you know, a believer in God. I'm not going to say religious, but I don't believe in religion per se. I believe in relationship. But if you're a believer, you would know that it, the Bible says that we're supposed to have life and we're supposed to have everything we want abundantly. All of those things that we want, we supposed to have it handed to us, but we're taught that we supposed to barely make it. We're taught that we supposed to live paycheck to paycheck. And that's exactly not what God wanted for us. There is a story in the Bible about this one guy. He, um, I think, I believe it's in Matthew, a master. He gave his three servants money. And out of the three servants, the first two, they took their money and they made their money work for them. They made their money grow. The third one, he hid his because he was like, I don't want to lose what I got. And I feel that's the mentality we have, especially as black people. We're so used to just hoarding things and keeping it to ourselves that we're not taught that we need to make each dollar have a job. We're not taught that our money needs to grow. When we get paid, the first thing we do is pay all of our bills and whatever we have left over, we put to save. And don't get me wrong, we should have at least three months of savings set up. But other ethnicities and other communities, the first thing they do is take their money and put their savings to the side. First thing they do is take their money and put their ties to the side, which is a tax write-off, mind you, okay? So even the government wants you to save um, or, you know, bless others or invest. But that's what we're taught the complete opposite. We're taught to take our money and spend it in other people's community. 
the average dollar in the black community only stays about six hours. As soon as we get paid, Friday night, money gone. We going to the club, we're going to go pop a bottle, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Whereas other communities, they take their money and they, like I said, make their money work for them. They, people come from other countries and they open up stores, they open up shops and things of that nature and they keep their money circling in their community. We don't do that. We take our money and we go elsewhere because we've been so ingrained as black people to not trust one another when it comes to business and everything else. So as soon as we get some money, we're taking it and we're spending it elsewhere. And that's the sad truth about the whole thing, honestly speaking. We're, that's the sad truth about it. We don't take our money and spend it amongst each other or with one another. But it's also based, like I said, not just on history, but it's based on our own personal trauma and things that we deal with in our own relationship when it comes to money and what we had to see and what we had to deal with. I know for me, you know, times I wanted things coming up and I wasn't, a, I wasn't able to get them. And so I always said to myself, I don't want to be in that position in the future, you know, or maybe I said, you know, oh, okay, I know the money we have, we supposed to pay our bills with it, but I'm so used to spending. If I had money left over, I felt guilty. I felt guilty. Is there anybody else that ever felt that way? Like, oh, okay, I supposed to take this money. If I have too much, I need to give it to whoever else because why am I blessed? Why do I feel like I have so much and the next person has so little? But that's because our brain and our culture and our background trained us to feel that way. As soon as it touch our hand, we got to go shopping. We got to go do this. We got to do that. And that's not how life should be. Money is an energy. You have to be open and receptive to it. Whatever you feel like you receive or you want in life, that is what you are going to get. Um, before they ban TikTok, I know it's going to be coming soon. I know they're writing off all these laws and stuff like that. But one of the things I thought that was on there was pretty cool. Like this guy, he said this mantra, whatever, money comes to me easily. Money comes to me, whatever. Money comes to me, money comes to me. I was like, you know what? Like that really works because it's all about what you believe in your head. Once you believe it, you'll actually be able to see it, feel it and receive it but you have to believe that you're worth everything that you have coming to you if you're studying saying negative things i can't do this but i will try to do that that's exactly what you are going to get so as a people we have to take the time to sit and evaluate and realize what is my personal relationship with money what does that look like do i save 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 because i'm scared that something is going to happen or if am I given every dollar I have a job? Every dollar you have should have a job. And that job is to make you make more money. That's the whole point. Um, oh, Lord, is my Wi-Fi tripping? Anyways, and the dude was like, have you ever seen that when people work hard, they don't be more richer than the other person. <laughs> Hard work does not give you more money. It doesn't. I hate to say it. And because all we was taught was, you know, every day I'm hustling. You hustle hard. You're going to get money. It sounds good, but you're going to hustle yourself into a grave. <clears throat> hustling hard and working hard doesn't give you more money. It all starts within. It all starts in your mind. Even sickness all starts in your mind. When I first was told I had lupus, I was like, what is that? What is lupus? I read about it, Googled this, MedMD, et cetera, et cetera. My kidney functioning went from 50% to less than 10% in one year. Not because I did anything different, but because in my head, I'm about to die. The, the world is coming to an end. I'm about to die. So with everything, it starts in your mind and it starts in your brain. It's up to you to be able to attract what you want in life, even if that includes money. You can't look at money as a tangible object. You have to look at it as an energy and, like I said, make it work 
for you as a person. Um, some things too that we can also do, excuse me, to help our community is, you know, we don't have enough business owners. We don't have enough business owners. Most business owners or most businesses that are minority owned businesses fail because we don't trust each other. You know, I know I can't get into a whole history lesson tonight, but it goes deeper than that. So we learn to trust one another and do business with one another as a community, we're never going to grow. Black people are the number one consumers. We spend $1.3 trillion every single year, trillion. You know, some of us will never even see a million because our mind isn't right. We spend $1.3 trillion. And the number three, the top three items those are in are clothes, number one, entertainment, number two, and number three is cars. We, as people, are so busy looking at a status. We trying to look good for the next person. When in reality, you should be trying to do something for yourself. That same money that you're investing and giving into the designers who don't even care about us, let's just keep it real, they're taking that money and giving it to their family. And they're leaving a legacy for their family. And we're not. We're not even taking that money and putting it into life insurance policies and using that money, like I said, once again, to make it grow. Ways to make it grow, buying real estate, getting life insurance. Some of the things in order to do that, you have to have good credit. I hate to say it, but you have to have good credit these days to get a job. You have to have good credit these days to get life insurance sometimes they will deny you car insurance they will deny you and people don't realize that so it all starts with a good foundation but we have to stop looking for symbols and statuses we're so busy looking for that we're spending our money in places it doesn't need to go you know it's just like the people who have that one family member in college and that one in prison they be quick to put some money on a person books in prison because they stuck. They don't have no way. They can't get no job, but they don't invest the money into somebody who's in college, who's trying to enhance their life. And so in college isn't for everyone, disclosure, but still just using as an example, who's trying to enhance their life and make their life grow. So once again, we have to start supporting one another and supporting those who are actually trying to do something in life. That is the main thing. Uh, let me see here. What else? Oh, yeah. I went over the fact we don't have an emergency fund at all. At all. And we really need to evaluate our mentality. It's just like, you know, people who believe in karma. When you say, give me, I want to be able to receive this so I can bless others. That's exactly what's going to happen to you. So whatever you put out in the atmosphere, that's how you'll be able to change the narrative of what you receive in life. Wealth isn't just about finances. You could be wealthy mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, but you have to start with yourself first. You can't help somebody else unless you're helping yourself. And if you're leaving comments, I'm sorry, I can't see it because like I said, I can no longer stream to the group. I have to stream to my business page, but it all starts within until you work on yourself and everything nothing else is going to and i have a bad habit of i'm going to try to do this no i'm not going to try to do something i am going to do this i am going to do that and every day whether you say it as an affirmation a prayer whatever your belief system is you have to make sure that you're staying saying things that are positive and uplifting so that way you can attract the things that you want in life. Because if you say you broke, you're going to be broke. If you say you don't have it, you're not going to have it. If you say I'm rich, I'm wealthy, and money just comes to me, it will come to you. It sounds crazy, but it's real. People only want to tell you what they want to tell you. Like people, like especially in the black church, they try to say, Oh, if you have money, you it's hard for you to get in. It's hard for you to get in heaven. It's easier for the rich man to get through the knee of the eye. They tell you that part, but they don't tell you the other 3,300 times God mentions money and say that you're supposed to have it abundantly. Money is mentioned in the Bible 3,300 times. 3,300 times. 
But they tell you about that one bad time. It's just like social media or advertisement. That one bad review is going to spread like wildfire. wildfire. But that negative, that negativity is going to, it's not, it's, it's going to go. But positivity, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear nothing positive. They want to tell you what they want to tell you, to, especially as Black people, to keep you down. They want to tell you the negative stuff to keep you down. So people run into the church, giving up their tithes. Like I said, nothing wrong with tithe. I tithe. You know, but it's other ways to give as well because they feel like it's going to get them closer to God. It's so many other things and ways you can give yourself and donate without you having to be broke. You don't have to be broke to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be blessed abundantly. So don't listen to people. Read it for yourself. Okay? I'm not trying to be rude, but read it for yourself. You can't just go by what people say. And we have it so bad listening to other people because we feel they have a title and a status that's above us. But it's all a title. I can name myself the queen of England tomorrow. That doesn't mean I'm the queen of England. Stop going by titles and what people have. It's nice to have a title and a position at work or a title and a position in a company, but put a title on yourself. Let me see here. John said, black excellence at its best love. The information she putting out. Thank you, John. Definitely black owned business. Support money over everything entertainment. When I tell you he started from the bottom, now he here. Okay? I mean, started from... A hustling mentality to a CEO mentality, legally. He sells clothes. He does events. You, you need it. He has it. But it all started in the mind. You have to believe it for yourself. If you feel like you're not going to deserve or get anything better, you're not. You're not. And that's what people want you to do. Um, like I said, I have my own stories with money, childhood trauma. You know the, the box of Kleenex? You know they tell you bring the box of Kleenex to school. Matter of fact, I bought two boxes of Kleenex for my daughter for the beginning of school year. School almost over. It's still sitting in the cabinet, okay? But um, another story for another day. But my mom couldn't afford to go buy me a box of Kleenex to donate to my class. She got some Kleenex from a neighbor. He was nice enough to give us his box. He only took like one or two out of there. And I took it to class and I was so happy that I was able to contribute. And I was embarrassed. The teacher said, oh, no, this is used. It's been open. It's been open with the, um, what do they call it, like a box cut or a razor. I'm looking like, you really going to put me in blast in front of all the rest of these little kids, okay? But that made me sink down. That made me feel like I was nothing because my parents couldn't afford a box of Kleenex. Couldn't afford a box of Kleenex, you know, and now I have two to donate and they still haven't made it to the school. But it all starts from a little kid, how you view and how you think about money. And I said to myself, I will never put my child through what I had to go through. I would never do that. I went to school. I had to wash my clothes on hand, hang them outside in the projects, hopefully hope, hoping they didn't get stole. <laughs> You know, wear my cousin's shoes to school was too big. But if I wanted to wear some name brand shoes, that's what I had to do. But how I felt about money all started because of the struggle I had to go through to get money. I had to, you know, so you would think in my situation, I would be a quarter of money, but I wasn't. I saw my grandma sit there by hand, write down all her bills every single month and paid everything and was broke. So I was like, that's how you live. You're supposed to be broke. You're supposed to pay everything. And once you pay everything and you don't have no money, you good and you feel better. And I felt better not knowing like Kayla, that's not how you live life. That's not how you do it. But it all starts from what you see coming up. So I'm here tonight to tell you that we as a people have to change our relationship and identify how we see money. We need to say, what is money triggers for me? What are some emotional things that I see and it triggers how I view money? And set some financial goals. They call them SMART goals. Goals that are um, SMART, like basically they're specific, you're measurable, 
So you need to set goals for yourself because without a goal, you don't know where you're going. You have to have a goal. No matter what you're looking towards, you have to have a goal. So create smart goals. So that way you'll know what you're getting to. And let's start having a more positive and loving relationship when it does come to money and realize that we're all meant to be rich. We're all meant to be abundant. Don't listen to what the naysayers say. Don't get the little bit of money you do have and go spend it and go pop a bottle. Use your money to make it work for you. So just start there. As soon as you get paid, whatever, whatever you do. Take 10 to 15 percent of that money and invest it. Buy some stocks. I'm no cryptocurrency genius, but buy some stocks or put the money in a CD for hard times, a certificate of a deposit. Put it somewhere where you can't touch it. And I promise you, before you even know it, you'll be able to see and watch your money grow. And something happened. Oh, I forgot. I got this money over here for that. Because you didn't even account for that money because you're living off of what you have left. We have to flip it. Let's stop paying our bills and invest in what we have left because we ain't going to have nothing left if we do it that way. Let's start investing first, then pay your bills. Because trust and believe, you're gonna make a, God going to make a way. Let's invest first. I don't care if you start off with 10%. Invest in yourself first. Give each dollar a, a job. And once you invest in yourself, then take the rest of the money you have and do what you have to do. It's been plenty of times I had opened up CDs, uh, got stocks on Robinhood, another account called Fundrise. I don't even know how to work that account. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm low on funds, but in reality, I was never low, never low on funds because way back when I put some money somewhere that I forgot about. So we're going to change the narrative for our community. We're going to change the narrative for ourselves. And if you want, contact me. Um, my website is joinkayla.com. We can schedule a consultation and we can sit down and we can do a budget together. Let's go over a budget and let's see what you have going on and where you need to start. I'm more than willing to do that. Because somebody had to sit me down and do it for me. Unfortunately, it wasn't my people, but you have to pay it forward and you have to pay it back. But once again, my name is Kayla Joshua. I'm a financial services strategist. I teach all my business partners how to make 100K in 90 days using my framework. So contact me and let's start making this money together starting today. All right, you guys, I'm about to go get something to eat. I know I went live early, so hopefully you guys can go back and catch the replay. If you catch the replay, drop a two in the chat.